Hello and welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. My name is Jason. And in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the main external features on this second generation Pentax Papilio binocular. And I'm going to start right now. Certainly one of the most interesting, versatile, and therefore most useful compacts that I've ever come across. The original Pentax Papilio has for me personally been a firm favorite for many, many years. And therefore it's been fantastic for me to finally get the opportunity to catch up with the new generation two Pentax Papilio, just to see what Pentax has decided to change on them and indeed what has stayed the same. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look mostly at the external features and components on this 8.5 times 21 millimeter version of the Pentax two Papilio binocular. But just note, Pentax also produces this in a 6.5 times variant. However, to the best of my knowledge, and I'm pretty certain on this, um, most of, if not all, the exterior components and features are exactly the same, whichever model you go for. And therefore, this video will be applicable to either version. Right, so quickly, before I begin, I just want to reiterate that the scope of this video is purely that of the external features and components on these binoculars for the full review where I go into way, way more detail and include things like um, the optics, the quality of the view under different light situations, as well as in, um, include things like a specification and comparison charts uh, between these binoculars and other similar compacts that I have with me, and indeed, obviously, other compacts that I've used and tested in the past. Um, the full review, as I say, will be on the BBR website, the link to which will be down in the description below. You know, as much as I would like to include everything in these video reviews, um, for one, it would just become too long, and two, the things like those charts, uh, etc., like that, just don't come across very well on, in a video format. So what I suggest you do is, if possible, watch this video in its entirety. This will give you a really good understanding and feeling of, of what to expect when holding and using the binocular and how to use it. And then from then you can delve much deeper click on, by clicking on the link, going through to the website and, and take a look at every single aspect of these binoculars. Apart from a few small details here and there, the overall body design and shape of the new Papilio 2 has not changed that much from the original. And thus, unless you look really closely, it can actually be quite difficult to tell them apart. Personally, I think this is a good thing, as I've always found the Papilio binocular to be very comfortable to hold and easy to use. And thus, I assume Pentax's thinking here was there's no need to change or fix something that isn't broken. Pentax Sport Optics has gone with a fairly thin but relatively soft rubber exterior armor that has a smooth, almost velvet-like finish to it. This not only looks great, but it certainly adds to their modern and quite expensive appearance. And whilst this finish does have a habit of attracting dust, making a pain for me to photograph, more importantly, it also provides you with substantially more grip than many other instruments that use much harder rubbers. In terms of impact protection, the soft rubber definitely helps, but then as I say, it is also very thin, and so it does not provide as much cushioning as a thicker rubber would. However, this is a small, lightweight binocular, and so I think what it has is adequate. And besides, in my experience, it is often the case that thick, soft rubber armors do often perish a little more easily and can often slip about on top of the chassis, which is certainly not an issue on these Papilio binoculars that I tested. Its location and just how you use the focus wheel is all pretty standard stuff. But it is what happens inside the body as you turn the wheel that is quite different from your average binocular. And this is what makes the Pentax Papilio binoculars special and is why they are able to focus at such close distances. You see, the close focus distance on a typical binocular is in part restricted by the distance between the objective lenses. This is because at very close ranges, you get a misalignment of the left and right image fields because nearby objects have a larger parallax than more distant ones when observed from different positions, which in this case is the two objective lenses. So to overcome this and reduce the minimum focus distance, Pentax uses an ingenious system that they call the CLOSE system, which stands for Con Convergent Lens Optical System Engineering, where they place the objective lenses on tracks that are not parallel to each other. So as you can see, as I turn the focus wheel to focus on a nearby object, the lenses move down the barrels away from your eyes, but at the same time, they get closer and closer towards each other 
Turning the wheel in the opposite direction to focus on a more distant object moves the lenses back up the barrels and closer to your eyes. But at the same time, they are also moving further apart from each other. And thus by doing this, Pentax has created a binocular that not only allows you to view objects far off in the distance as you would normally, but it also enables you to obtain a sharp, clear image at just 50 centimeters or 1.6 feet away from you. I found the wheel itself to turn extremely smoothly and it takes just over three full turns to move the plane of focus from one extreme to the other. Now this gearing is far lower than what you find on most normal standard pairs of binoculars and thus it takes a little longer than normal to make large focal adjustments. However, on the positive side, this gearing along with the extremely smooth focus mechanism makes fine tuning the focus to get the image 100% sharp a little easier to do than what you would find normally to be the case. Unlike most polyprism compacts that incorporate a single central hinge, the Pentax Papilio has two hinges, so one for each eyepiece. These have a mechanism hidden within the body that connects them together, and thus when you adjust one, it also moves the other by the same amount, and thus they essentially behave in a similar fashion to a single hinge. Now I found this mechanism to be nice and smooth, and the eyepieces open and close with just enough resistance to ensure they remain at your desired setting. Speaking of which, you can adjust them so that the eye cups go from a minimum distance of 5.6 cm apart right up to 7.4 cm. This wide IPD range is very good, and therefore they should be able to accommodate a wider range of faces than many binoculars can. This includes those with closer set eyes, so here I'm thinking along the lines of children, which because of their other aspects, like their relatively low cost, small size and wide field of view, makes them an excellent choice as a binocular for kids. The majority of compacts, and most certainly reverse poroprism compacts like these, are not tripod adaptable. By this I mean they are not designed with being able to easily attach onto a tripod in mind, which I guess for most users will be of little consequence. However, I can think of quite a few situations and users, like for example scenery artists on location, a scientist studying or sketching insects for example, taking photos through the binocular with your phone and using an adapter would be another one, where being able to perfectly steady the view on your binoculars and be able to train the binocular in a specific direction and have it remain there hands-free would be of great importance. Thus I feel it is certainly a welcome feature and one of the many instances of the great attention to the small details that Pentax has shown with this instrument and once again certainly adds to their versatility and range of uses. Just a quick note before we move on, the way that the Pentax Papilio binoculars are designed to attach to your tripod is slightly different to most binoculars that I would describe as being tripod adaptable. This is actually quite a good thing, as the standard quarter inch thread is located on the underside of the body and not on the front hinge as you normally find. This means that it is not necessary to have a special tripod adapter, but you do need to be careful to have a tripod head or tripod mounting plate that does not get in the way of the rest of the body. Whilst many compact binoculars will opt for the far simpler fold down design of iCup, probably to save on manufacturing costs, I can gladly report that like the older version, Pentax have gone with the twist up design of iCup, which if made well, do offer a more precise way of adjusting the level of eye relief to your specific requirements. Once again, I can happily report that the eye caps on these Papilio 2 binoculars are indeed pretty well made. And by that I mean the eye cups fit nice and firmly onto the housings under them so that there is very little free play. They also click nice and firmly into each of the three fixed click stop positions. This in combination with a fairly generous, for a compact, 15mm of eye relief meant that I could use the binocular both with and without my eyeglasses on and be able to take in the full view without any dark rings forming on the edges. As with most binoculars, to adjust the diopter setting on the Pentax Papilio, you simply turn the ring located on the right eyepiece housing. For those of you who are unaware, the diopter enables you to make adjustments to this side of the binocular separately to the other, and thus be able to compensate for any differences in vision between your left and right eyes. 
you can take a look at an article that I have on calibrating and focusing your binoculars for more information on the BBR website. The diopter ring on the Papilio isn't lockable, but to be fair to Pentax, this is a feature that I only usually find on far more expensive instruments. However, they do have a series of fine, closely spaced click stops that go some way in helping to prevent unwanted movement, and thus I feel that these are certainly better than the majority that you will find at this price level. For a binocular within this size category, where the whole idea is that they should be as compact as possible, the dimensions are especially important, as this is one of the main reasons for choosing a set over a larger sized instrument. So as you would expect, compared to your average standard size binocular, the Papilio is indeed substantially smaller. But as you can see, their relative size when compared to other binoculars within the size class depends on what state you have them in. So what do I mean by this? Well, when you have the hinges opened, like when you are using the binoculars, the size of the Pentax Papilio 2 is fairly similar to most other compacts and they compare very well. However, the most compact, truly pocket-sized binoculars use roof prisms with a double hinge design. This particular design enables them to fold up into a much smaller shape than the reverse poroprism design used by the Papilio, and thus potentially makes them even more convenient to carry about when not in use. Do keep in mind that whilst the double hinge roof prism compacts are undoubtedly smaller when folded, they do have their downsides and unless you are prepared to spend more, you will likely not achieve an image quality as good as you will get from these poroprism compacts and others like them. This is largely down to the fact that roof prisms require a number of special coatings in order to achieve the same level of reflectivity as a poroprism. And on top of this, they suffer from something known as phase shift, which can be corrected, but once again requires special coatings, which drives the costs up. Therefore, if you want a high performance compact without having to spend a lot of money, reverse poroprisms like these are often the best way to go. My sample Pentax Papilio 2 8.5 by 21 binoculars were supplied with a cleaning cloth, protective carry case, ocular lens covers and a neck strap. Whilst it is basically very simple, I really do like the Pentax Papilio carry case that you can tell is specifically designed for these small lightweight binoculars, unlike the millions of generic ones I see used by many manufacturers, especially at this price level and below. The advantage of this is not only does it look better and seem more a part of the unit as a whole, but the binoculars fit very well into them, meaning that it is tight enough so that they do not flop about, but at the same time there is enough room to make putting them in or taking them out simple to do. Also something to mention here is that you can just about close the flip over lid and keep it fastened without having to twist down the eye cups, although the fit is really tight. Now I know this may seem like a very minor point, but if you are using your binoculars often, and like most users have the eye cups fully extended when you do, it can become a bit of a pain having to twist them in and out every time you take out your binoculars and replace them in your bag. Also, just to point out here that the flip over lid is held closed by a strip of Velcro, which works well enough, but you do need to be careful when opening and closing it so as not to make too much noise, especially if you happen to be sneaking up on timid birds or other types of wildlife. Made from a faux leather type of material with a felt-like interior liner, the stitching and general quality of the Pentax branded case is also very good, and whilst it is only lightly padded, I do feel that the amount is sufficient for a small lightweight instrument like these, and any more would only add to the, unnecessarily to the weight and volume that you would have to carry about. Also to mention here that the case does not come with any separate pockets, which is a slight shame as they can be useful in storing things like a cleaning cloth for use when out in the field. On the rear of the bag you'll find a belt loop. This in combination with the size and shape of the bag, and indeed the binoculars contained within, made it very comfortable to wear on the hip, and I found it to be an excellent way in which to carry about these binoculars. As with the vast majority of compacts, the Pentax branded nest strap included with the Papilio is quite thin and unpadded. For a larger, heavier binocular, this would be completely unacceptable, 
but for the Papilio, I feel is adequate. In fact, a larger, more padded neck strap would only create unnecessary bulk for you to have to carry about. One point to mention, and a real highlight, is the excellent attachment system that Pentax uses to fix the strap to the Papilio. Not only is it very easy to click in and out should you want to remove the strap, but once locked in, it is held very firmly in place and won't come away by accident. But at the same time, it also allows the strap to move very freely and independently of the binocular, which makes it fall into a natural position when bringing the binocular up to your eyes for added comfort. Once again, this is another example of the very good attention to small details shown by Pentax. Designed to protect the eye cups and the exterior lenses on the eyepieces, the Pentax Papilia 2 binoculars come with a typically designed rain guard. Made from a soft plastic and branded with the Pentax logo, like the other accessories, it is obviously not generic and it performs its intended task well enough. By this I mean that the cups fit perfectly over the eye cups on the binocular and so are just tight enough so that they don't come away too easily by accident, but at the same time are not so tight that it makes taking them on and off in any way difficult. I like it that the cups are connected into a single unit and thus you have less pieces to misplace and that they have a flexible bridge between the cups which means that they can be returned onto the instrument without having to open and close the central hinge on the binocular. This once again may seem like a small thing I know, but I can assure you that it does get annoying to have to open and close your binoculars every single time you want to use them whilst on a walk. My sample Pentax Papilio binoculars also came with a microfiber cleaning cloth that is about as good as you'd expect to find at this price level. And thus I would say it's perfectly adequate for cleaning the body and in a pinch fine for very light use on the lenses when out in the field. However, I would still recommend that you consider purchasing an inexpensive lens cleaning kit for thoroughly cleaning the lenses without the risk of damaging them or their coatings. I guess you could argue that the lack of an objective lens cover is an oversight. But to be fair to Pentax, very few compact binoculars come with these included. And the way that the lightweight carry case has been designed to hang from your belt, I think the idea here is that you would use that instead as the way of protecting not only the lenses but the rest of the instrument as well. Even though I think they are water resistant, one area where I think Pentax could improve the Papilio would be to add a fully sealed chassis and then fill it with a dry gas like nitrogen to make it fully waterproof and protect the internal objects from fogging. Although having said that, being careful, I have never had an issue with them in the past, but I am careful and would not consider taking them out on an activity like canoeing where the chance of them getting wet is really high. So if they were fully waterproof, this would open them up to even more potential users, making them even more versatile than what they already are. Right, okay, so there you have it. I do hope that this video has been of both use and of interest to you. If it has, as always, I would seriously appreciate a thumbs up. And if at all possible, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me to continue to produce more and more stuff like this for you. Also, if you have any comments, thoughts, or opinions, please feel free to use the section down below. And I will, as always, I'll do my very best to get back to you. Also, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you know, for the full review where you will get way, way more information that I just couldn't include in this video. I will also obviously talk about the quality of the view and compare it to other similar types of binoculars. Check out the link in the description that will take you through to the BBR website. So I'm going to leave it there for now and say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Cheers for now.